I figured I'd start with my favorite Carl Sagan quote. I'll give you a moment to read it. This is actually printed on board the circuit boards that will be flying to space on, on this mission that I'll talk about shortly. Um, so my name is Joshua Emancy Castro. I'm a PhD candidate in aerospace engineering, and I'm part of the Space Systems Design Studio. Uh, we're a lab in Cornell Engineering under Professor Mason Peck. Um, the lab's been around for about 20 years now. And we are known for modeling, designing, building, testing, and even flying new spacecraft technology. And we're especially known for student-led projects. Students have the fortunate opportunity to design, build, and fly their own spacecraft as part of this lab. One of which I want to draw your attention to on the, the left is called a, a chipset. This is essentially um, condensing the essential elements of a larger satellite on a single circuit board that fits in the palm of your hand. And I have a, a sample of the one I made here for scale. So these types of satellites are not as capable as bigger satellites, but they enable new forms of space exploration, um, some of which I'll talk about shortly, like light sailing. So light sailing is a concept that's been talked about for about over 100 years now, um, but has only been really brought to life in recent years. And it's been talked about by scientists, including Carl Sagan, who helped bring it to um, popular audiences through The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson there. And the concept um, boils down to propelling spacecraft through light. Let's say you have a light source such as the sun or an artificial source such as a laser. The photons emitted from those sources can bounce off this sail like a shiny reflective sheet kind of flying through space. And each of those photons will provide a small push that will drive this sail. And that, that small push might not be much. But in the vacuum of space, um, it can add up. You're going to keep that momentum, and it will accumulate with each of those small pushes. With a big surface area like those sails, you can get small pushes that will get you faster and faster um, and eventually get to destinations further than any spacecraft has gone before. Um, so in recent years, they've finally um, been able to bring this to life through um, JAXA that did a flyby of Venus. Um, NASA has done a few deployments in low Earth orbit. The Planetary Society, founded by Carl Sagan, even launched their own in 2019. This is Light Sail 2, which is very successful. And there even was one that launched this year um, and is currently in orbit right now. So in comparison to those, sail that we're developing here at Cornell is a little smaller. It's half a meter by half a meter, and it's called Alpha. So there it's, it's on the far left with the person there for scale. And despite its small size, it is still capable of accelerating to higher speeds, if not faster than the existing sails to date. Um, and that ties back to a few factors, one of which is those chipsets that I mentioned. When this sail is driving a payload that's only a few grams, it does not need to be as large. And because of that, the sail itself can be more durable. The, the mechanism that helps it stow in the rocket and deploy and unfold into space can be simpler, too. So we're using a, a really interesting origami mirror fold and a shape memory alloy cross-framed to help this expand into its fully unfolded state once it's in orbit. Um, finally, the sail material itself is retroreflective. So that's the same as what you see in stop signs or bicycle reflectors. It directs light back in the direction it came from. And that allows us to control the direction of the sail with the direction of the, the incoming source of light, um, such as a laser. So laser sailing is particularly exciting um, because of the idea of going interstellar once again. Um, there's a group out there called Breakthrough Starshot um, that is bringing this to life. And their, their idea is to have a large phased array of lasers that will send a fleet of light sails to the Alpha Centauri system in the hopes of looking for signs of life out there. And to do that, it has to be a very strong laser beam, accelerating these to 20% of the speed of light for a 20-year journey. And to get something that fast, you also need a small sail and a lightweight payload um, that will be something very similar to the chipsets we're developing here at Cornell. Um, I sort of rebranded it by, as a star chip, but very similar concept. Uh, we are not quite there yet. Um, the, the work here at Cornell is a little kind of near term in terms of our own solar system exploration, but our chipsat sail architecture is looking at first Earth orbit and then moving on to Moon and Mars exploration. And I put near term in quotes because each of these does take a very long time um, to get launch ready. And we're still very much focused on the, the Earth orbit part here. And you'll see there's a few spacecraft in the picture. So the sail, like I said, does not get sent to space in that state. It does have to go in another spacecraft to deliver it. 
And the one that we're using is called a CubeSat. Um, if you haven't heard of them before, CubeSats are cube-shaped sh satellites. They're um, about 10 centimeters tall, and here's one for scale next to us here in the clean room. And um, this form factor allows for very accessible and affordable launches. There's even an initiative called the NASA CubeSat Launch Initiative that will launch these for free for, for some universities, and we're launching through that. So this form factor is stackable. Um, there's different units based on the standard U unit size, and um, it allows for rapid prototyping. The bulk of our satellites actually are 3D printed, which is really cool. There's two missions that we're working on that involve CubeSats here at Cornell and, and LightSail. So there's one called Alpha that's been in development since 2016 and will be flying this summer. And um, against better judgment, I started a new project in the fifth year of my PhD called uh, Sailing to the Stars. Uh, very dreamy name, but similar concept, um, testing the deployment of light sails from CubeSats, uh, but inside the International Space Station instead of outside. And this allows us to get high resolution footage that will be live streamed from astronauts that will be conducting this deployment sequence. So the concept of operations for both is very similar. I'll focus on alphas here, but it will be ejected from the International Space Station and have a random tumble. It'll stabilize into a spin. And when we establish radio contact, we can send a command to have it eject and unfold from the CubeSat. So it's sort of a, a nesting doll of different satellites. We have our chips on the sail, sail on the cube, cube from the space station, a lot going on. Um, and there is a lot of engineering that went into this. Um, I don't have time to cover it, but I just figured I'd show all the parts, the thousands of parts, um, and, and the thousands of hours that went into designing these spacecraft. Um, one thing I do want to focus on is this idea of um, sort of a pre-interstellar message plaque. We're not quite going to the stars yet, but on board our spacecraft, we have holograms that are mounted to the, the solar panels. Uh, these were based on sculptures designed by the artist C. Bangs, and it's inspired by the work of Carl Sagan, the pioneer plaques and the golden record, and it has a central theme of, of DNA, and you can see the double helix of the DNA there in clay form and, and holographic form. And we were fortunate enough to do a collaboration with the Intrepid Museum in New York City, uh, where we got to showcase these. Um, and we even had an extra hologram on our sail of the, the Voyager Golden Record, um, or the Voyager spacecraft overall. Um, so these holograms, we want to inspire a larger audience to think about what messages could we send to the stars and in that theme of, of Breakthrough Starshot one, go, one Day Going to the Stars, there's actually a really cool functional purpose of these holograms. We could have a holographic light sail that not only provides these interesting images, but can actually help stabilize the sail while riding on the laser beam. And I won't go into the engineering behind that, but just take my word for it for now. Um, so picture a holographic laser sail that can be composed of thousands of images of uh, artwork throughout history, people, places, things around Earth. Um, it's a really holistic representation of life on Earth um, that we could send to the stars. And we really want to encourage um, the public to think about, if, if given this chance again to go to the stars, what could we send? Finally, I want to acknowledge um, the big team behind me here. I've had the pleasure of working with over 100 students across the College of Engineering, Arts, and Sciences since I've started here and I could not have done this alone. Um, it's been a personal dream of mine to build and send something to space, and it's been an honor to share this experience with so many other aspiring engineers. Thank you.